Killing in the Name of is one of the best rock songs ever and definitely one of the best protest songs. And you guys say fuck 17 times, <laughs> which actually comes to define the band. Can you take us through creating that song? Sure. I think it's actually 16 fucks and one motherfucker. Just to clarify. Just to clarify for the record. Just to fact check us. Fact check us. <laughs> for, for, for the record. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, well, I, first, first I'll, I'll talk about some of the nuts and bolts of, of that song. But for me, I think that the, the the timeless quality of that song has to do with the you know with Zach's brilliant l lyric and and to me it 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 relates to something in the Frederick Douglass autobiography mm -hmm. where Frederick Douglass said he was freed from slavery not the moment when he was released from his physical bonds. Mm -hmm. It was when Master said yes and he said no. Mm. Wow, and that's fuck you. I won't do what you tell me. That's it's like right. it's, a, it's standing up against illegitimate authority wherever yes. it rears its ugly head in your home, in your community, in your place of work, in your school, in your country at large. The actual nuts and bolts of the song were. I mean, it's funny because that was that song. I think we kind of buried that on our demo. It was song six on our demo. Mm. You know what I mean? So we, it was not obvious to us from the from the from the get go. Was be but I was a guitar teacher in Hollywood making making ends meet and I was teaching some local rocker how to do drop D tuning. I will not bore you with what that is, but anyway, it's just sort of, it's a way that this guitar sort of sounds a little bit different and in just, in showing him how it kind of reconfigured the fretboard, I came up with that riff, boom, do da chicka da na now na ba na na and I said, hold on one second. Got out my little Radio Shack, you know, cassette recorder, mm -hmm. put it down there for rehearsal Radio the next day. Radio Shack, is that still alive? <laughs> <laughs> this was a long time. It was in 1990. It was long. It was in 1991. I remember this Radio Shack. <laughs> <laughs> Without Radio Shack, that song we would not be talking about that song. Right. right Radio now. Shack was very important to my upbringing as a as a musician. Absolutely, Just, they had Absolutely. all the gadgets. Yeah, they had all the gadgets yeah. for for nothing for cheap. Yeah. So anyway, so brought that into rehearsal, and then you know it became a part of like our set, and it was actually curiously and and incredibly it was the suggestion of our A&R person at the record company to make that song with 16 fuck yous and one motherfucker the first single mm. I couldn't believe it it was when music was sort of changing it was Forward from thinking engine A&R absolutely right? yeah. absolutely it was like it went from this world of these kind of like pop rock heavy metal bands of the 80s to the Nirvanas the Pearl Jams Tool bands like that where I think the record companies recognized we don't necessarily understand everything that's going on but we want it to be the most of what it is that right. it can't turn that up. And that song felt like it was sort of the epitome of what we could do. Right. I was just on a business call in the back and we were watching the video for this and it's like, they were trying to get me to do something. And I was like, well, no, did the money come in? I'm like, well, no. And then and in, in, the, in, the, in the back, it's like, so do what they told you. <laughs> do what they told you. And then I was like, well, no, I'm not going to do it. And it was like, fuck you, I want. Yeah. And Jasmine's like, yo, this song is perfect it for applies, everything. It applies in right. a lot of situations. Right. Yeah, just keep that one in your back pocket. <laughs> Get it, call me young, go get it. They can't fuck with it, my slow go away.